Thank you very much. Good afternoon and welcome to the Parks, Reserves and Environment Subcommittee meeting of the 18th of November 2020. We have received apologies this afternoon from His Worship the Mayor, Francois Tumahai, Joe Parsons, Donna Beard, and Councillor Jane Neal. Any further apologies? There, are none. there being none, some are prepared to move that we receive and accept the apologies. No, I accept the apologies. Executive Riley, all those in favour? Aye. It's great to have you all here, those that could make it. The declarations of interest. Interest registers here being circulated. Please make sure that any amendments are noted to me and myself, um, and any conflicts disclosed at the time that they are discussed. The, are there any urgent items not on the agenda from the staff? Being none, we'll move through. Thank you very much. To the minutes of the previous meeting. Held on the 16th of September 2020. They have been circulated via email in Microsoft Teams. And we are, uh, it's proposed that we resolve that they are true and correct record of the meeting held on the 16th of September 2020. Yep. So that was present. It's happy that they're true and correct. Biddy, Executive Riley, all those in favour? Those again. That resolution is carried. Thank you. And I approve that my digital signature be added to the confirmed parks, reserves, and environment subcommittee meeting minutes of the 16th of September 2020. Thank you. The action list is the next agenda item, agenda item five, and we're going to have two of our. Um, Managers speak to this. So uh, it's agenda that um, the planning and customer services manager and the group manager district mm -hmm. speak to the action list. So good afternoon and welcome to our staff. Thank you. Right, so the, um, thanks for, for that, uh, for the chair. Um, the uh, first item I refer back to you. Um, um, so, we did discuss at the previous meeting that um, the race course master plan, um, the workshop, etc., was referred to or deferred to the uh, planning regulatory committee. Uh, so, that should probably come off the action list. Uh, at present, that work has been um, completed or filled through with by a consultant representations to give us that we've got some information to put out to the public when we are ready to do so. So the second matter there is the town centre plan. Um, again, referred to the planning regulatory committee um, and again being worked through in concept phase so that we've got some, some clear indication of what we're putting out to the public and do that. <clears throat> Thank you, Fiona. Um, next slide is the beachfront and sunset point upgrade. Um, the question was asked then for the uh, request was for the planting plan to be circulated to committee. Now, the planting has been completed, um, and the only item that remained was actually the uh, hydro seeding for grass. Um, I think I suggest we just take that item off the action list. Um, we have uh, discussed the detail around it at the last meeting. Um, master uh, management plan. Um, uh, this is uh, basically having a master plan uh, for the town centre. Um, and um, Oh, sorry. Uh, it was sorry. It was about uh, the reserve plans. Sorry, uh, management plans. About to management plans for all our reserves. So uh, um, that um, is work in progress. We're currently working out a method um, to actually execute that part of work. But that part of work um, is a uh, significant amount of reserve properties uh, within the council. Council holds, and um, we have uh, reached out to. Uh, some consultants have come to assist with those management plans uh, to put those together. So 
better sedation um, that will we, that will carry and will pull back um, if the next week you go on progress. Uh, next item, uh, tips and key. Um, so we've had the walk uh, with Heritage Hokitika uh, members um, and key part of that um, walk around and, and, and developing an action list was very much based around Custom House um, and I'm happy to say that we've now secured um, uh, additional funding for Custom House and uh, that action plan can now be finalised. Um, so currently working on the scope of works, but that would um, I suggest that the, the funding received at this stage would limit the work to sort of more or less around um, the custom house, in, um, in, in particular um, pruning some trees in, in some uh, uh, work around the, uh, the uh, immediate area around the around custom house. So um, I would uh, propose that we we'll present to, to the um, committee a uh, an action list uh, from in, in the scope of works for, for custom house at the next meeting. Um, the next item, um, the mountain bike club um, vision. Um, so the mountain club has reached out to council and they will present at the next meeting um, their vision for how they would see uh, connecting trails being set up around Kalkatika to um, present us with uh, what they propose is a um, cycle trail for, for visitors to Kalkatika in particular. So we're looking forward to that presentation. They won't be here for today, so we'll give them the opportunity um, at the next meeting to present. Um, the next item, uh, uh, Heritage Walking Trail Group, um, unfortunately, uh, Jackie Gurdon is away at the moment. She was uh, uh, planning to present to the, to the committee today, so I'm um, saying we'll uh, move that to the next meeting. Um, next item, uh, Cass Square and Race Racecourse Concert Plans. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, so again, <laughs> it's all tied in with the town centre plan, the race course plan. Um, so again, things that are getting conceptualised, um, once we've got some ideas in place, then we'll have something to go and start having um, meetings with sort of the individual stakeholder groups and then go to the wider public. Thank you. And then uh, the site visits to Sunset Point in Casquay, uh, which will uh, implement uh, once we uh, complete this meeting today. All right, thank you for the um, update to the action list. I'll open it up to the committee for any questions, starting with Roll. Um, just going back to Fiona's comments about the race course and, and the town centre, I guess. But some of these things are off, off this agenda, but I guess we can follow the council documents as they come, come through. and. We can then have input on any any documents as members of the public or bring it to a future agenda of this meeting. Yeah, I'm quite happy that they come off while they're being worked on by other other groups. But this group doesn't want to lose sight of them. We, we have an ongoing interest in the race course and the town centre and various other. Right. So I think in terms of we're strictly speaking reserves, definitely Casquera race course would be something that we would be looking at committee and yes, yeah. once we've got some of that information built to have a conversation around. So we expect those to stay on the, on the agenda for this meeting. Thank you. And the custom house, the, the good news about the lotto grant, um, there was a problem with the reporting date, I think, with some previous date. So because of COVID, it had stayed in the system for a long time and they hadn't changed the date. So we need to change dates before it's signed. Uh, but then it will be signed by the Chair of Heritage Hokitika. It was mainly about, the lot of grants mainly about the building and the pile, piles and repainting, and fixing rotten weather boards, but there's a lot of associated work that Louis was talking about with vegetation and flagpoles and, and lots of things that, that will continue to work with the, the council operations staff. So can I suggest that when we move from Cass Square to Sunset Point, that oh, we go we via, walk past it, so. we go via yeah. the customer yes, yeah. and actually get yep. an idea of the words proposed. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Hey. No questions. No. Okay, no questions. Right. 
Oh, no questions from me. Okay. What did the grass seed take? <laughs> so, so did the grass seed take? Oh, we, we'll find out soon. Um, yeah. Sixty. Um, 60. Um, so the rest of the sixteenth, we put off to the river and create this commitment. So we're still negotiating a, a lay date before Christmas. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's tidy up this action thus far. Can we can we keep the race course Kess Square in town centre plans, not as um, the current actions that are stipulated, but as um, standing item for the committee in terms of when an action or milestone is reached for the committee to be informed of that action or milestone. Can I make a suggestion, Chair? Um, we discussed with consultants today and they're preparing to have a draft ready for workshop with council on the 10th of December. So I extend the invitation to the uh, Arts and Morales Committee to do it at the same time. So we have to have a combined workshop with both Parks and Reserves Committee and Council the Full Council. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. So rather than having two sessions. People happy with that. So we still yeah. we still have that interest in that, although we're not leading them, and we'll be invited to attend the workshop on the 10th of December. Time. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the timing will be um, during the day, which we are left with some of the council members or committee members. But that's really good. So we are, we'll, we'll still definitely be involved. So that'll tidy those up. So the first action item is gone. The town centre is gone. Beachfront and Sunset Point upgrade is gone. Mm -hmm. the, the management plans for reserves needs to stay there. And I heard Louis say he'll provide an update on where that's at at the next meeting, which I think is in February. Yeah. So, very, very similar to um, what we have done with the asset management plans. They have taken 12 months to do a comprehensive review. I anticipate that a reserves management plan will take some time, you know, probably not as long as 12 months, but there's a lot of, um, like, a lot of reserves we do own and manage that needs some detailed work behind them. But the concept is to develop an overarching management plan and then the detail will sit as appendix to that master plan to do the relevant reserves throughout. So my only comment further to that is there was discussion around a workshop happening with an internal workshop with staff and a proposed list of what reserves we currently have that we may not need strategically and what pieces of land might need to be acquired for reserves in the future. How did that work go? So, uh, fair to say the workshop didn't go very well because of the amount of data missing. So, we have since done a review of the data. Um, we have it tabulated now in terms of, I suppose, pockets of land that council do own. That, um, could be utilised differently. So out of approximately 300 parcels, there's about 40 that need further consideration. And they are not only parks and reserves, but other pockets of council-owned assets. That's excluding um, destination Westlands Council. So there is quite a bit of body of work to actually understand that as a separate item. I don't think it belongs in this committee, but it's definitely a larger piece of work that will require it. Probably a resource for quite a long time to work through. Um, Gibson Keys just a watch and brief. Mountain Bike invite, Club invited to the February meeting. Heritage Walking Trail Group invited to the February meeting. The next the next action item comes off, and the next the following one comes off has been completed today. Hopefully, so. With those, with that update and those amendments to the action list, someone will be to move that we receive the updated action list. Yeah. Okay, second. Committee, second roll. All those in favour? Those against? The resolutions carry. Thank you very much. Um, we have no presentations as noted um, in the in the agenda, but I propose that we we'll need to take some agenda items out of order because the circulated agenda had us going on site visit now. So, permission of the meeting, I'd like to move us into the verbal update. And we 
and we move into the maintenance items first. The most contentious, let's start with that. The maintenance contract. So, um, so there will, uh, the maintenance contracts have been circulated to the committee, I understand. No, I need to be no. Yeah. There are there's confidential information within the maintenance contract that we are you know, I don't sent it to you, Chair. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's privileged information regarding financials. Um is that correct? And other aspects of, of contract contract okay. terms, etc. Okay. So it'd be really good to hear from through Louis team in terms of uh, current management of the maintenance contracts in relation to parks and reserves in terms of how we feel that it's going and also our aspirations in terms of where we would like to be and then the steps needed to get there with the timelines of actually tendering it ahead of the LGP so, so everyone's on the same page in terms of the maintenance contract. Thank you, um, through the Chair. Um, First, I would say, um, I'll start off with saying we believe the maintenance contract is going really well. We have given the performance of the contractor. I think, um, saying that, um, I think there is probably a divide between expectations and what the contract is engaged to do. Um, and that is um, obviously um, through conversation, um, specifically with this committee, but also with the general counsel. Um, there, there is uh, certain uh, probably uh, mis misunderstanding, I would say, uh, of, of what, what the contract has been signed up to do in, in what the expectations are. So, um, in particular, I can point out um, uh, you know, for parts, um, so for part maintenance is not in the in current maintenance contract. Um, uh, so we've recently done a clean of the CBD area, um, the, or the, uh, the paved areas, so the steam clean, um, hot water, uh, and that was a, a special um, you know, one sort of, uh, in, in future that will be built into the maintenance contract as probably a biannual event, um, so twice a year we'll clean the uh, down the papers. Um, other, another point that came up was um, mowing of the, uh, the berms in, in town. So um, the contractor is currently not signed up for that. Um, the, the work, uh, although the um, current maintenance contract has done some um, mowing of berms, uh, that it was never engaged to do that. So. What we've done is we've formalized in the process of formalizing the money um, with the contractor. Uh, the current contract format does not really provide us flexibility to add things in and take things away as we see fit. And that's been part of the challenge for us working with this current contract. It is proposed to go to a different contract format in future. Um, which is going to be a cost plus contract. Um, this has been successfully uh, used by Buller Council in particular. So we've, uh, we've taken a lot of advice from them in working with Buller Council currently in how that those contracts should uh, be formed in the future. Uh, and, and we'll cover other, in general, other maintenance contracts, for instance, our, our water services contracts, uh, maintenance contracts, and so forth as well. So we, generally, that's going to be a paradigm shift for council to move to that model. Um, saying that, uh, I think the, the work around what is, what we should, what the performance criteria should be in the contract will potentially uh, for, for the future contract will um, there will be some consultation around that with council because we all need to understand is um, there's always a cost associated with expanding the, the scope of works and uh, the, uh, you know, the rate payers of a particular need to uh, pay for that service um, in, in understanding what that means is potentially something we'll Discuss in more detail in the near future. Any questions? 
Um, Canary Road, uh, roadside mowing. Yeah. There'll be a height specification for that. So again, as I said, the, 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 um, there is a height specification, correct? Um, and um, especially, it's especially challenging this time here in spring. Um, yeah, when, yeah. When, I'm uh, just saying the weather hasn't been ideal and the grass. Right. We all, we all uh, can just watch our own lawns and farming house yes, yeah. at the moment. It's, it's, uh, Probably requires a lot more mugging. Um, in, um, but in, in general, we, you know, we are aware of what the contract is doing, where he's working, and we're quite happy that, we, that the Canadians follow at the moment in, in the amount of attention to given to the work uh, in front of him is inadequate in, in, in regards to their performance. To the chair, yeah. the canary road section and any of the road sections in the rural area uh, run through the road maintenance contract, right? And not run through the park and reserves. It's a, okay, it's a, it's a totally different. So, just make a note canary road is getting a bit overdue. And Frost has pushed the, the grass between the canary road and the, and the bush. That's now well overgrown, but I think that's probably the, the extreme weather we've had. Because it's quite wet on there. But it is looking quite untidy. I'm pretty sure that's on the reserves contract. Um, if I can ask the place uh, manager to still respond to that. Um, yes, it is. There's, and there has been delays, but every time it rains on the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I understand that's not an easy one. With two things on that particular thing. These sorts of issues should be addressed through this reserves. You know, make a maintenance plan or management plan. So why have we got a lawn that is a swamp and can't be mowed? You know, that should be addressed at a high level. But then the detail is, I, I don't believe that at the moment the mowing's actually adequate at all. And I think that's shared probably by most of the community, not the berms. The berms are on our side, but the reserves going into the airport, um, up to Whitcomb Terrace. Well, I mean, no, the and it much that. You know, so I, I don't know. Apparently, West Road's mum was blown up. Is that, is that true? I, um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we haven't been informed. Um, <laughs> we, we were standing in the office yesterday and watching um, into the West Road's mum in the area yeah, next to the farmlands. I just wonder why I'm yeah, that was push mode. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, that'd be mode. The, the push might be all right, but yeah. it's not going to do all yeah. the. You so, know, it's, so potentially the rider mode could be out of action here yeah, as a result. Because they, they were using a push mode. You know, just to, so, what can we actually do as a group to uh, convey to you, to council, the collective appetite to uh, see a uh, See if we're saying that the contracts are being fulfilled, to see our aspirations fulfilled. So what I suggest to the chair is, is we do we do reviews now. But we we can table the outcomes of those reviews as part of this committee, just to ensure that the council, you know, as part of that critique, provides a, a, a special report that gets performance. Um, we've got to be bear in mind that this there is. Uh, oversight in terms of governance, but there's also an operation aspect that we manage in terms of that. So, um, and also with the contractor. And, uh, so it comes down to providing uh, assurance that the council's doing its job and keeping the contract at uh, the right maintenance level. Mm -hmm. So we, we take that on board as, as, as the director from this group to do that. Um, we'll have a critique in terms of the outcomes of the previous reviews. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair comment. I don't think we want to get into the operational, no, but I no, think no. those examples are just showcasing some of the some of the disconnect that maybe the community understands is in the contract that it's actually not in the contract. And what steps do we need to take between now and July? Adoption of the LTP to ensure those things are really captured, like regular mowing of um there's a there's a there's a height you've seen the contract outside the contract 
Well, that's not good. Well, probably um, with lunch. There's a height management item on this boom mics at the head of particularly when the parks are reserves. And if it's wet, that's what they're not doing it. So not just the feeding that. No, no. I would no. ask that the members of the group here have an issue that they put through the service request system, because it's the only way we can capture it. Otherwise, every time we come here, we talk about the same things in a different area, and it's not captured, it's just, I remember I went past the wet and such and such. But if we don't actually have a list of service requests to report to or action on, you can't go back to the contract and say, we've been told, you yeah. actually have to have a document. That I, that's sort of what I was just going to say, that maybe as a group, when we're out and about, we just make a bit of a mental note of some well, of the... Well, to council and use the service. Yeah, say, yeah. figure out some of the areas that we feel could be a little bit... And that way we can identify the areas that are in a contract or in another contract and get them addressed. Yeah, and if you see something in your travels or people yeah. talk to you, send it to me. I can be loaded into the service request system, anyways, and yeah, like on the website. So if you just get a photo of it and then send an email up through, we can, if you haven't got access or haven't got time to put it in the service request, we can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I just like to support what you said earlier, Lathan. There's a link between the reserves management plan, which is the expectations, the reserves contract. Um, maintenance contract, which is trying to achieve those expectations. There's also a link through to the annual planning and the cost of it all. Because as Louis often made the point, if the public expectation is that the level of service increases substantially, that's going to be reflected in the cost. There's a, definitely a bronze, a silver, and a gold standard. Right? Yes, yeah. So I think we've got ourselves in a position where we're not gold standard in terms of contract. Where um, expectation is a gold standard, whereas probably the contract sits at a bronze level. Yes, yeah. So we um, we will manage that, and obviously through council, putting that to the community and part of the budget process and the contract um, review process. Yep. Some of the areas, though, have slipped, you know, and the longer you leave them, like not sprayed or not mowed, the harder it gets, and the more work is involved mm -hmm. in doing it. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to if we're only paying this much, mm -hmm. um, you only get so many resources to get around to do that much. Mm -hmm. So to, to pull this conversation with Clovis, I wonder if there are just some things that we can capture now that are that are those hotspot issue areas that well we've got the staff here can note, we can note that and then we can move through the agenda. So um, things that have been brought to my attention are the Ross Cemetery. We were down in the site as it was getting mowed on the day. It was getting mowed on the day, but um, it gets mowed around. It's like it's shrinking up. You know, so that was that whole, remember it was all cleared back to the fence lines and mm -hmm. now it's, it's shrinking in and in and in. So that's been raised. The, the uh, Gibson Key, and a part of this is the, the issue with the railway crossing or the railway line. But that long grass all along the side of the trail here, all along the, yep. or the pedestrian walkway up the top, that's been raised. Airport Hill, the climb to the Airport Hill, the climb to the Bonnard Drive. The entrance to town. The entrance that's to not, that's outside the council. There's not a part of the So that's once again the NCTA contract. Part of it is. Part of it is. Yeah, it's not they do the, the gardens are on for we take up the car one time. Is that us or NZTA? Gardens are apparently council. Is that very yeah. 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 So, yeah, 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 not in a very tidy manner for like a new building in the CBD. Um, it needs weed spraying around like the, the outflow pipe from the septic tank and all that sort of stuff. It's been looking a bit scruffy. Where is this for? The new the toilet new block, new toilets in Ross. Oh, yeah, yeah. The lawns and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, it's being mowed, but not, not up to the edges. It's not tidy, like it should be a little bit more maybe presentable. Yeah. And the, we'll see them today in the Casper Gardens, the flower beds, um, for the weeds, and um, the layout for gardens and weeds. For all months now. <laughs> so they get planted since so, so, so they get planted. <laughs> 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 I've got to get planted since a certain time. I think um, they, they they they're reflecting on spring. It's 50% wetter than 
yeah. last year. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. It's been extremely wet spraying. So oh, yeah. It's yeah. put a lot of maintenance back, and particularly spraying and even mowing. So uh, we'd say for a long, dry summer, which is coming. And the CBD garden. So that was that was the list that came through. And if we can capture them and just note them as things that need yep. in the next fortnight, okay. a weed and spray and a mine rifle, mm -hmm. or we'll activate the volunteer army again. I just clarified the, we're talking about hotspots now. Does that mean that the review of the reserves management plan is going to be based on reviewing the hotspots first and sorting those out? I think no. No, or has that been done as an overall process? An overall uh, technical okay. document, then um, obviously the detail that for each individual reserve will be reviewed one on one. But uh, what we need to do is get the framework right for an overarching reserve plan, what the expectations are for that. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying, I don't want this meeting to sort of degenerate into a Complaint about the hotspots every no, no. every two they months. Want to get into the, <laughs> and so if the, this is the expectation, how are we meeting it? And the research management plan is the way of overcoming that continual hotspot yeah. Yeah. emergency and, response, um, if you like. Yeah, through the G, you did talk about volunteers. Volunteers play a big part of our yeah, reserves yeah. already. And how we each of those reserves are managed differently around the around yeah. the district. A lot of volunteers. Um, Looking after, and we obviously contribute towards that in different ways. But I, I, I endorse the idea of volunteers. In fact, I believe there was a volunteer uh, gardening group that used to look after the CBD, which yep. faded away once again. Like to, sitting over here. <laughs> I'd like to reinstate that if the committee was um, supportive of that in some capacity. Yeah. Thank you. So, really. The important things are the completion of these management plans. Mm. And I don't know how we can, as a committee, actually throw some weight, but maybe we recommend to our superior, which is the Community Development Committee, so it's to recommend to council. That is a bit convoluted, but really to put a good focus on this. I think it's with citizen science, our work plan anyway, in terms of input from staff. So it's something that um, Louise leading as part of his role. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you very much for that discussion. Kamara Junction, round with that. All right, so um, I can comment to that. For the tree, that is actually uh, based on the emergency between community and NZTA. That's not the emergency. So um, that's outside of the council. So, so this was an um, objective of Kamara Junction community. Uh, community. Um, David would just happen to be part of that community at, at the point in time. He stepped back. Um, we facilitated a, 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 a meeting between NGTA and the community to get it completed, the planting of the roundabout. Um, I talked to the community lead, Hector, probably two weeks ago. I planning to do a weed of that in the very near future. Either. The day after I put it on the agenda, <laughs> um, um, I got weeded. Oh, they were already planning yeah, to do that yeah. prior to that. So it's in their hands to manage that, um, yeah. that roundabout. No, it was just the whole thing was at gorse that high, thick yeah. across it, and I thought this is not going to, yeah. you know, and it, it was an eyesore. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Um, but they, 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 I suppose, the custodians of that project. Cool. This is all very good in theory. Then we get a week spring. <laughs> volunteers are busy. You know, that's the entrance to the to part of the district. So it's yeah. Even though it technically isn't our responsibility, people don't drive past that roundabout and go, "Oh, the middle seems in TA and the other sides got Middles Kiwi Rail." You know, um, Joe Blogs. At the end of the day, that. we did warn the community if if they're going to do this, it's, they've got to continue it because. We were taking responsibility for this community community led initiative. Yeah. I know it just it reflects on us actually. You know, people drive around their roundabout and oh gosh, council, they don't see all the they don't see all the other steps. So I appreciate there's a real positive community drive to get it sorted. So it'll be good. The South Rubbish Month. 
So historically, there were bins, uh, council empty bins at Lazar Park. I assume they got removed from the, I mean, they were actually the concrete bins that really were demolished when the park was dug at. But the issue we have now is these rubbish with the park, these rubbish. So we have had to take our wheelie bins inside the hall because they fill up in a day, sort of thing. We can reduce so part of our sort of waste program. Yeah, is there a way to get something? Yeah. Yeah. I assume we're still paying for them to be empty. No, they're taken off the contract because it was supposed to be for one spot. So we'll discuss that. Oh, okay. Okay. Are there, are, there, um, are there some of those bins that were down at, at the beach, the three sitting around somewhere? Yes, they're part of the part of the. Um, part of the uh, Wisconsin camping group. So it will be assets, assets not uh, assets. So they being used at the moment, in other words. So that's an action. Thank you. Firm moment. We've kind of covered that, but yeah. are you just, just to um, just to touch on this and reinforce what we said. So I've had instructed district assets to work with the contractor to pick this up. Um, it's fair to say that. Um, the contractor was doing it out, out of the goodness of their heart for the last, I suppose, three years um, through an instruction of council. Um, they're losing money on mowing bins, so we are working with the contractor to actually um, pick this up again as part of the variation to current contracts, which are going to be current contract. That sounds very sensible. But is that best bundled with the contracts? Like if you're thinking about this is getting into your area, but is this actually in terms of mowing the burdens, if that was put out as a separate you know, contract for someone to or groups to tender for mowing the burdens? Uh, if you want to take another couple of months for that process. No, I don't. No, that sounds sensible to get us through to the but I'm saying when you, when you tender the parks and reserves contract that needs to make $1.2 million, whatever the contracts with, that naturally only allows some players to tender, doesn't it? There's only so many organisations in our community that are suitable at that sort of price. But if you stripped cemetery, you know what I mean? If you looked at it kind of like at CBD's one area. We so it's a, it's a concept we can look at as far as potentially a tender process where you can tender for part or all of the pro process. Yeah. We will consider that. Um, we'll discuss that internally. And there's a saving on, on scale. So the smaller you make the contracts that take a certain amount of management to manage them, and certainly managing eight different people instead of three different groups, and, and then you, you, you don't get as good a price because you're dealing with smaller groups doing smaller areas. So you do, get, there is a, you do get a economy of scale. There is opportunities. We've already been approached, particularly on the communities on the way south, that there are organisations who would be quite keen to put um, their names forward to do smaller, smaller areas. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll look at that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Ross Senator. Yes, I sent through some photos. Um, the cenotaph needs the lettering restored the lead lettering on John K. Allen's statue, he was in war, and the lettering on the Second World War soldiers, you can't even read their name unless you go right up and feel, do braille, and feel the, seriously. Um, that needs repainting, and a couple of stones that have come out from around the base, they just need resetting, and that would be. Well, I, so. I, I can uh, respond to that. Um, that is not a function of council. Okay. Um, yeah. You cannot touch those. Um, you, an application needs to be put through heritage. Um, they, uh, or through RSA? Um, through so potentially. Potentially, yeah. So um, what we'll do is I'll get um, John Bainbridge to contact you mm -hmm. and he will provide you the correct people to contact. Yep. So it, it has application goes to Huntington and they actually are. Appropriately approved to touch yep. any lettering, painting, yep. or moving anything yep. of that nature. Yep, cool. So, so who's the land does it sit on? 
What's council do? It's council land, but it's it's um it's historical. Yeah. Um, Community? No, it's actually not not the community. Uh, so any war memorials in, in, it is actually under a specific ownership and control that, that's run in Wellington. Yep. Yep. No, it's cool. Just uh, to make a comment about um, on our road trip south with council. Um, we did spend um, time at the various cemeteries in terms of um, Ross Cemetery is in a pretty bad way in terms of a lot of the grave sites are badly damaged. Um, there is a piece of work I'd love to do um, with the communities around you know, applying for, it's very hard when it's individual um, ownership for families, you know, they, mm. they look after the grave site, but mm. there's a lot of damage that it's full into a massive disrepair. So working with relevant, I suppose, community groups or um, that look after the various cemeteries in terms of upgrading or repairing a lot of those that can be upgraded. Would that come under heritage as well? Definitely. But yeah. um, I know that some, some groups have their own private management of uh, cemeteries. There are others that um, there are friends of it, you know, but we need to visit that because um, they just going to get worse and worse if we continue. Like, yeah. through, through the chair, it's so the same up there, right? the same tree as well. Yeah. Right. Exactly the old old grave sites up there, which are falling into disrepair, which we aren't being really entitled to blame us. So mm. it's not a good look. No. Mm. We'd like to do it as, a, I suppose, a special project, some yeah. way to actually get um, um, the. Um, the central government on board with this as well. Yeah, because I know there's a lot of the graves that are over 100 years old there, um, a lot of their families are still come back or, you know, in touch with. Um, some of them not so much. But um, so I think a lot of those families would probably be quite happy to see that happen because of the damage to most of those ones where the, once they were actually pushed over by some young people in Ross that were not and Ross very long, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, we'll need approval from the rest of the families, which requires mm -hmm. quite a bit of work and research as well. Yeah. Um, just a correction, the, 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 um, the war, war memorials is, is veterans' affairs. Yep, yep. I was talking to them the other day. Yep. So, um, can you JB with that in and follow that up? Yep, cool. Thank you. Right, Chinese gardens. The floating gardens of Ross. Hey, they've dropped about two metres. Oh, two metres? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since we visited it. Well, actually, they did. It dropped about two metres, and then we had that rain the other way after <laughs> it, and it came up again, but they have dropped again. Um, I had a site meeting, Steve Maitland and I did, with Tim Shaw from DOC and Regional Council, um, Chris Barnes, on site last week, early last week, I think it was. And yeah, they're looking into seeing what can actually happen. But there's a massive slip up Jones's Creek, which has created the rise in the creek to the intake by about at least that much. And it's all sediment. There's about 50 to 60 metres worth. And it's just sitting there and it's risen the creek bed, which and it's pushing it most of it into the lake. And it's still a flow going under the culvert, but not like it was. So without going up there with a shovel and moving everything like I did one other time. Um, we've just got to wait, but Steve and I went up and had a look at the slip the other day and GPSed it and sent it through to Tim and Chris Barnes. And Tim's going to come up with me one day as well just to see what might fall again. A lot of it's not going to fall again by the looks of it. Um, and it's, there's saplings across the creek in some places, not many, and all the roots, all the soil around the roots has been washed away, so nothing's actually blocking the flow of the creek. Um, so yeah, it's just wait and see. But I had sent photos of everything and the slip two weeks prior to everything being put on Facebook um, to the Chinese sponsors, and they fully understand and they're quite happy. They know we're going to carry on. Yeah, but we can carry on with all the rest doing the gabion baskets now and finishing off the. 
we won't finish off the drawing creek being just yet, um, but the, the bridge and some of the other features. Yeah. Yeah. So, is the lake actually at the level that it was consented to? That's higher. That's higher. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like if, if another slip does happen and you know, like this happens, it gets cleared and it happens in the future and then the lake rises again. And this, you know, might yep. not happen for five years, but yep. it might happen three times in a year or whatever. Is is the issue that that may repeat itself? Um well I think Stu Challenger is going to come on next Monday to meet and he's an engineer. So to get some ideas of what we can do, like if we need to seek some sort of funding, we're probably going to have to um, chase it up. But there's, you know, there be there's ideas. You know, you can't just give up and think of. Oh, no, no. I agree. yeah, we can't give up. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't. <laughs> don't wave it away. Yeah, but, you yeah, know, like but what, what could some we sort do of as a controllable. Yeah. Um, Somebody said to me that somebody who had, was working for DOC at the time of all of that said that they were thought that there was meant to be some sort of like maybe floodgate system put in or that there was an intake and an outflow as well, S suggested. But we must have some plan somewhere. Well, I've requested a copy of the resource consent from Regional Council. We could start. Yeah. No, we don't have any planning. planning um, Matters associated with this. It's really unlikely that the rehabilitation thing would have sat with us. It would have been regional council and been department of conservation. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, um, they said to me that happened to me oh, about another 15 days now. Yeah. So um, we, that, that will give us something to go by as well. Do you want me to email it through when I get it? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. For interest, for interest. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, then you can see what we're dealing with to, to get it resolved. Yeah, 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 that's a great community yeah. um, initiative, but it can't just be left to float away into the lake, can it? So we need to come up with a solution. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I can report back to anyway uh, what Stu Challenger recommends and what council, um, regional council report back to me as well. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, Comings and meetings, we can discuss that while we walk, I think, because we've got only part of the part of the group here anyway. So, um, someone to move that we received the verbal updates. Yep. No pity. Yep. Thinking of Riley will go from the paper. It's great. Thank you very much for your attendance at the meeting. And at three